Grace and peace be unto you. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me welcome you to this awesome time of just releasing the kingdom. We need to plant the kingdom. We need to pray thy kingdom come. We need to plant the kingdom by speaking, by preaching, by articulating, by declaring it and understanding the message. It's very important to understand. And so we are really excited as a people, as a, a whole community. At this time, we are just elated by what God is doing and how he has kept us by power divine because he has a plan. Uh, the Apostle Paul declared that uh, the very creation is groaning and just uh, desiring to get to the finale. And so when we feel tremors and when we see natural disasters, the creation itself is, is just groaning. Not they only said Paul, but we also groan to, to get to that place of redemption, final redemption, because the suffering is tremendous. Uh, the things that are happening around our planet, just astoundingly, astoundingly, uh, just beyond comprehension but we we know that god has a plan we know that the kingdom is about to be planted we know we understand the power at which the anointing and the reservoir of the holy spirit is going to be poured out and so today i'm just going to take you through the functions of the kingdom it's very important to understand the functions of the kingdom they are parallel to what we see in our nation and we must have uh, the understanding so when the message of the kingdom is preached there are about seven things that happen when the, the message is preached from uh, your pulpits wherever you you assembly wherever you go to church wherever you receive the word and instructions of god remember the church is the educational institution of the kingdom so when you listen to your pastors when you listen to their delivery systems and how they bring the word across that gives you education there are seven things that happen so that you can know that the kingdom is really in your your atmosphere where you are in your church you have information you must be informed the word of god informs us the word of god gives us information at a high level so that we can now see our pro the, what's happening on the peripherals what what's happening right in front of you so you have information you must have knowledge you must have knowledge you must know the word you have to read the word you have to spend time uh, in the book of revelations it says Blessed is he who reads and they that hear the word of the, of, of the Lord. So you have to hear, you have to read, and there's a blessing, there's a vitamin B that comes attached to that. You have got to have knowledge, information, knowledge. You have to have what you have, comprehension. Comprehension is very important. There are many things that have been said through the media. There are many bits of information coming through government uh, agencies. Uh, even our students are receiving lots of information, but comprehension, we, we are lacking in comprehension comprehension when we comprehend we separate issues from personalities we separate issues from personalities so we must have comprehension to understand what's happening in our nation to our leaders to the educational system to the energy sector what's happening there to the banking system comprehension and then we we have to have what is revelation revelation must come from the lord revelation is powerful revelation is like bread every day give us this day our daily bread so if, if you are not asking for fresh revelation if you're not asking for what god is doing in this 21st uh, century you're not going to be able to understand and articulate what he is releasing and so you have to have revelation you got to have information you have to have knowledge you got to have comprehension and then you have understanding Understanding. understanding is powerful and then you have to have what you call activation where the Spirit of God is going to anoint you and we, we understand that with the anointing the Holy Spirit is able to work with you he's able to work in you and through you and so as wet is to water so the Holy Spirit is there to the, the anointing as heat is to fire so the Holy Spirit is there to the anointing and so it's important to be anointed and stay anointed Isaiah 61 declares the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me and then Jesus came and he brought that whole portion of scripture into actuality and activation and revelation and we saw where he took the book and he read and the manifestation of that thing came upon his life and finally you have to have the manifestation manifestation is important so we begin to see manifestation and with, with the information that you would hear and the information that will come from the release of the kingdom these seven dynamic processes are happening 
information, understanding, comprehension, revelation, activation, manifestation. And you, you have to just receive those levels so that you can now get to this place where you understand. So the functions are important. The first function of the kingdom, when you re wherever you read scripture and wherever you look, it's parallel to what is happening even in our nation, Trinidad, Tobago. So the nature, the nature, the first function of the kingdom is the nature. The nature of the kingdom is increase. And so when we look at what uh, Tobago, for instance, produces, uh, you see there's an increase in air traffic. I don't even have to look at the statistics. I could tell you from what you hear uh, at the airports, at the seaport, there's an increase in people that are coming to this nation. There are increase uh, in numbers. There's an increase in visitors first time repeaters uh, there's an increase and how do we know we understand from uh, just a phone call they said we have no tickets available no tickets at the airport uh, bookings have just uh, skyrocketed there's an increase and so the same thing is happening in the kingdom the nature of the kingdom is increased and so because of what we produce as a, a nation our product our tourism product the reef does not change it's still there we just have to preserve it the rainforest does not get any larger the island does not get any larger it's the same size and so what happens is there is an increase in uh, what is happening there's an increase in the awareness of the beauty the flora the drive around the coastline uh, coming there from uh, Castara out of Runnymede and you descend into Castara that view of Englishman's Bay it, you don't find that anywhere else in the Caribbean so the, the nature of Tobago has caused an increase in the capacity of people that are coming so is the increase in the kingdom the nature of the kingdom is increasing and so in your life there is going to be increased you're going to see it uh, not just financially you're going to see it over your children you're going to see it in in areas of uh, your business you're going to see it in areas of your ministry there is going to be an increase there's a, a urgency of the anointing there's an urgency of heaven pressing upon us in spite of what we see in our nation in spite of the negatives in spite of what what the enemy is trying to do we know that when Wherever sin abounds, grace much more abounds. The second level of the kingdom is the dynamics. The dynamics of the kingdom is that everything is getting better. Everything is getting better. And this is so powerful. Uh, things are getting better. Uh, in, in the midst of uh, recession, in the midst of what we see uh, in the natural level, we realize that things that God has released over our nation, those pioneers like the late Colonel Nelson, the late Bertrand Bear, those pioneers that God raised up from this nation, who prayed through, who sent out to uh, clarion calls to other nations, and build ministries up and anointed sons. Here we are today. We are the recipients. We are standing on their shoulders. We are standing here in the 21st century on the shoulders of those that have pioneered, those that have heard the call, those that have prayed through, fasted, waited on God. And so the dynamics of the kingdom is everything is getting better. You can sense it. You can feel it. At one time in my life, I had no idea that I would be able to articulate the kingdom and understand what God is doing in the 21st century. So so my life becomes, yes, an increase. My life becomes uh, something that has been transformed from not having information to having information. And the best is yet to come. And so the third level is the power, the power of the kingdom. Every time God releases his power, God has spoken once, twice have we heard it. Power belongs to God. The power of the kingdom is force. And so we know that Jesus declared in Caesarea Philippi, the gates of hell shall not prevail. The kingdom suffer violence from the day of John the Baptist. What did John the Baptist do? He challenged the Herod dynasty. Uh, he came in the power and the spirit of Elijah. So Elijah had to challenge Ahab and Jezebel concerning what they were doing in Israel. Here comes John the Baptist. He now challenges uh, the, the political uh, arena and he lost his head. But here Jesus now begins to preach. He picks up from where John the Baptist left off. Uh, by the way of Galilee coming through the sea coast, as the prophecy declared, Jesus came in the power of the Holy Spirit and they said who is this this must be John the Baptist he's risen from the dead they still had his head and they buried the body but they said something is wrong here this message of the kingdom is being preached repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and so the, the power of the kingdom is forced you have to force the issue whenever the enemy is trying to shut you up 
Whatever the enemy is trying to keep you uh, bound and incarcerated from what God is releasing, you have to use force. You have to force the issue in prayer, force the issue in worship, force the issue. Whatever is lukewarm in your life, you need to be in red hot fervent heat pushing. You need to increase in giving, increase in your time, increase in every area. And that is what the force is. The force means what you have been receiving as we wind down 28. Don't you dare come to the end of the year with the same modus operandi. You have got to increase in every area. The moment you begin to increase, you are pushing against. Just like Jacob, he increased in the wrestle. He increased in the fight. He increased in the, the, the match. And at the end, the angel said, let me go. And Jacob said, no, I'm going to force the issue. I will not let you go until you must have a conditionality. Until you bless me. And so the force is powerful. The force of the kingdom, hallelujah, is where the power of God is and where the power of God lies. We have got to force into the word. There's sometimes you don't feel like doing it. There's sometimes you don't have uh, the urgency or the tenacity or the drive to even read or even pray before you turn down for the night, but you have got to force the issue. There's sometimes you don't want to rise up and pray at 3 a.m., at 2 a.m., at 12 midnight, and you see Paul and Silas there. Uh, they are praying. They're, they have been beaten with many stripes but they are in the inner prison in Philippi and they begin and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises and the prisoners they had to force the issue deep inside that apostolic anointing and there was an earthquake and the prison doors were open and so you know and you know and you understand that with this season that we're in you've got to force the issue. The fourth level of the kingdom is the culture. The culture of the kingdom is service. Here in our nation, we have seen uh, a cultural exp uh, exposition of what we uh, uh, produce, where we came from, our inheritance, our heritage, uh, how we view uh, the world as a people, what we are doing concerning agriculture. From the agricultural system, our culture has been uh, rooted very strong. How we dance the cocoa, how we do the farine, how, how we do the other hors d'oeuvres that we serve up and how we do our meats and the way in which we prepare our clothing that's culture the culture of the kingdom is service so you begin to see uh, how the kingdom uh, is uh, represented in scripture you see David uh, the book of Acts said when he had served his generation he fell asleep and so when you look at the service that he produced he, he, he had to kill the giant he had to move from killing the giant to dealing with uh, the spirit of honor he said don't touch Saul he is God's anointed God will deal with him uh, you saw where he came to the kingdom. So he served this generation. You see Esther serving her generation. And you see the anointing. Service is powerful. And so the, 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 the culture of the kingdom is service. And so the anointing helps us to serve. You see intercession by Abraham. Intercession by Moses. They're serving. You see uh, people being birthed like the church. And we are birthed to serve. The Hebrew nation birthed from Abraham. They are birthed to serve. You, you see the, the, the gifts like Jeremiah. He's serving Israel and the people don't want him to serve. So every time there's a gift, every time there's an anointing, there's a spirit of rejection. And you see the stone that the builders rejected. He it has become the head of the corner. So don't you ever turn uh, and feel as if you are intimidated or people don't like you or they, they think uh, you think that they, they, are, they, they, <laughs> they don't want you to do what God has anointed you to do in the house. No, no, no. You've got to serve. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. You see the psalmist David, he is serving. He's writing those psalms. He's singing and putting the musicians in order to release the praises unto the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. Praise him with the palsy and harp. Psalm 150 reminds us, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. You see Miriam at 90 years, she's dancing with the timbrel. She's leading the women into dance. What are they dancing about? They have increased. They have, uh, hallelujah, come over Egypt. They have come through the Red Sea. Things are getting better. Increase is coming. Force God, use the force of the wind to lift the Red Sea. Bring them through. So the kingdom now is showing power. The dynamic 
dynamics of the kingdom, the nature of the kingdom, and then the culture is service. You see Jesus lay aside his garment. He is the great one. He is the God of all flesh. He is the I am that I am. He is the creator of the universe. But you see him lay aside his garment and he girds himself with a towel and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He becomes the servant. The servant now is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye. And so the culture of the kingdom is service. And so just as we see in our nation, you see people serving. You see people having gifts. In different villages, you'll hear uh, of this lady who has a gift to put in uh, shoulders and to help women with their wombs. And if you have your bush it drops and if you have a bush medicine, you know what I'm talking about. You have service all over. But in the kingdom, when we serve, you hear David saying, what is going to happen to the man that kills this giant? And you hear them say, well, all your taxes are going to be revoked in Israel. And you're going to marry the king's daughter. And so God is a God of reward. When you serve, he is going to reward you. And so in every area, you see Paul serving. He said, boy, I'm serving, but I've been beaten. He said, twice I've been beaten. I've spent a night and a day in the deep. I have had all kinds of problems with false brethren, but you have to serve because the culture of the kingdom is service. And so serve the Lord with gladness. Do what he has called you to do. Put a smile on your face. Forget the spirit of rejection. It's always going to be there but you have a greater assignment on your life now the order number five the order of the kingdom is structure so wherever you see structure you are going to have to see what God is doing from the bottom up after the earthquake there were structural uh, damages. After the earthquake, there were inspections on buildings and the infrastructure of our nation, which is just uh, customary and which must be done for safety. And so there are areas where you would see in the media and in the news where they are saying, look, after the cracks that we see, we know that this structure is not going to hold. We know that it must come down. We, you know that in some areas they have to put walls in and they have to put steps in because where it was once was, it is no longer there and so there, after the tremor after the shaking you have to put structure structure is important and so the order of the kingdom is structure after the earthquake in Caesarea Philippi you see the jailer about to kill himself and he Paul jumps in with the light he said don't kill yourself we are all here and the jailer says what must I do and he said believe on the Lord Jesus put structure in your life the order hallelujah is coming uh, order is structure and so you see Jesus now He's coming after the order of Melchizedek. He's bringing structure to the priesthood. He's telling us that the way in which you have to go, hallelujah, you have to be a king and you have to be a priest. You have to share these two natures. And so sometimes it's very difficult to articulate what God is releasing because now when you think of how he has designed us, we are his workmanship. So form follows function. He has designed us in such a way to accommodate these two powerful uh, natures the, the kingly anointing, I should say, and the priestly anointing. And then he says, you are the salt of the earth. And we understand that salt is a derivative of two powerful poisons, sodium and chloride. When God tampers them together, you have preservatives. And you know how powerful structure is. Structure, without structure, nothing can move. Your car without the chassis can't go. The chair without structure and right placement cannot take your weight. Your bed needs structure. Your life needs structure. Your family, ministry, structure in every area. But structure only takes on its full powerful potential after there's a shaking. After there is oh yes, a, a move hallelujah of God. And so God is saying to Ezekiel look at these bones. Look at them in the valley. He said can they live there in the valley? They are dry. Hallelujah. And God is working with the structure first. The bones bones need to take on hallelujah cartilage the bones need to take on sinews the bones need to take on all of the vessels the arteries and the veins and oh yes the covering of the skin the dermis the epidermis and then God says you need to prophesy to the same wind hallelujah that he released in the valley to keep them dry he said Ezekiel use that wind and begin to cause bread to come in them structure and then you see number six the 
the anointing of the kingdom is the gifts. The gifts are very important. The anointing is the gifts. There are many gifted people around the world. And the moment Michael Jackson died and Whitney Houston passed on, there's a, there's a talent search all over the globe. There's a European search. There's an American idol search. And they're looking for the next best voice. They're looking for the next best talent that is just phenomenal, not just ordinary, not just people who have been trained, but th th that, that bathroom singer, that household uh, act, act that they're just looking for that the searchlight is on and you begin to see hundreds of thousands of people, they're coming to the fore, they're coming and you wonder, wow, where was this person all the time? They were right there, but the gifts, the gifts like Esther, she was just there waiting for the opportune, no mother, no father, just Uncle Mordecai saying, keep going, honey, don't give up. Ah, uh, where was David. Samuel says we are not going to sit, we are not going to eat until you bring the final son because something is happening here. All these boys that are standing here, none of them are receiving uh, none of them are receiving a thumbs up from God. So something is wrong. We have to wait for the final. Gifts are coming. You see the gifts like, like uh, the easy care. You see the gifts like God himself is a gift to us. Hallelujah. In the beginning he created. So he's an artist. that He formed the flora. He formed the former. He formed Tobago there. He formed Trinidad right where we are and he is the God of all flesh. You see counselors like Ahithophel and builders like Bezalel. This boy is gifted to take gold and make it into the Ark of the Covenant and overlay it. Hallelujah. And so we understand that in the anointing of the kingdom the gifts are coming to the fore. Gifted men and gifted women are needed as never before. You better have your resume ready. You better be trained. You better be ready because God is looking for you. He's, he's, he's a spirit, said Jesus. And he's sitting at the well and he says, woman, you don't know. My father is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's seeking such to worship him. So there's nothing wrong with the worship, but he's looking for the worshiper. He's looking for the gifts that have been placed within you before the foundation of the world. And so this is the time to bring them to the fore. And so the anointing that you feel on your life, it's a gift. It's not a gift for you to keep to yourself, but there's someone else that needs a release. The, the, the success now, which is number seven of the kingdom, is generational dominion. Success is important. How we build it now, how we preach it now, will determine what the generation uh, tomorrow is going to receive. This is why the, the broadcasts are recorded. They're recorded, they're stored, whether on YouTube, hard drives, they're stored so that the generation tomorrow will have a reference point. Because we begin to hear of the statistics of how many students that are entering school. But when they ask them, what religion are you? They said, none, none. Hundreds of thousands of children that are about to go into the educational system, but they have no reference point. Mommy never told me, daddy never told me of any religious uh, connotations, of any structure that we have in our lives, of anything of God. So you begin to hear the teachers are uh, just alarmed by how many students that are saying no religion, not, not, not this, not that, not the other, no religion. And so we begin to know that generational dominion is important. When Jesus sat on the well, the woman says, can I? inform you please that you're sitting on the well that Jacob gave. And she said, are you greater than our father's Jacob? She had no idea who she was speaking with. When Jacob built that well, it was an inheritance from Isaac. It was an inheritance from Abraham. The land, the property, how they got the well, how they were able to go into a hundred feet of earth to bring out water. And so the woman looked at Jesus and she said, you have nothing to draw with. How are you going to, and you can't touch the vessel I have because you Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus said, I have water. Water, a, a, a generational dominion, this kind of a, a success that he's having. He gave it now to Peter the apostles and you see simple folk from Galilee, just peasants, just fisher folk, cottage industry people, anointed on the day of Pentecost, generational dominion. Number eight, the currency of the kingdom is faith. You must have faith to believe that you are going to exceed, uh, excel and exceed expectations. You have to have faith because they that come to him must believe that he is a rewarder and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith now is the substance
absence of things hoped for. In the Message Bible, it says the fundamental fact of our existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is a firm foundation under which everything that we believe in is set upon. And so we know that we are upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus now himself is the chief cornerstone. And that stone that the builders reject, he becomes the head of the corner. Hallelujah. And so the currency of the kingdom, you have to, the just shall live by faith. Number nine, the strength of the kingdom is dominion. You have to take dominion. Dominion must be taken. God would not just release dominion to uh, just children like that. Maturity has to come on your life. To take dominion, to seize dominion. Dominion is uh, all the other things that God would do. He will gift them to you. There's giving and receiving. So you have to receive. You have to open up your heart and he will give. So giving and receiving is part of the kingdom keys. But when it comes to uh, the, the strength of the kingdom, uh, dominion, Dominion, you have to take dominion. And so if you're not ready, when a strong man arm keeps his goods, Jesus said, this is how the spirit realm operates. When you are strong and you keep your goods, your goods are in peace. Your goods are in security. But when you have a stronger, he's going to take. So Jesus has stronger authority. He has been highly exalted. He has been gifted and lifted up. And so he has dominion. You must have dominion. You have to take your family back. Take your wife, your husband, your children, your ministry, you have got to have dominion. Things are going to happen. Uh, attacks are going to come. People are going to speak all kinds of stuff. Things are going to go haywire. But when God has released his power over your life and purpose, destiny, ah yes, the fight is going to come. But you stand your ground because dominion, hallelujah, is the strength at which you're going to stand at. Finally, number 10, the access of the kingdom is understanding mysteries. There are mysteries in the word of God. There are mysteries released Miserias are released, hallelujah, at every level. And so Paul speaks of the mysteries of godliness. Great, without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God now was manifested in the flesh. That's a powerful mystery. He was justified of the spirit. That's a, another level of mystery. He was seen of angels. That's a powerful level of mystery. He was received up into glory. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare the final mystery. He's coming again. And so with the power of the mysteries, you understand the kingdom. You understand the security and the safety in the kingdom. You understand how God has released to this time gifted men and women like myself to release the kingdom. And I'm not alone in this. There are hundreds of thousands of young people that are about to come. That's where generational dominion takes hold of the next generation to come. That would increase. That will have the dynamic effect of everything is getting better. And so I'm excited, always excited about what God is doing because things are getting better. And the, the increase is coming. The force is there. The service of the kingdom is there. Dominion is there. The currency of the kingdom is there. Everything that God has released from heaven is there. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We now have to have dominion to tap into it. That is mine. That is yours. You have to speak it. You have to be confident and you have to use the currency in your wallet. What do you have in your wallet? The currency of the kingdom is faith. You've got to use faith. It's like a credit card. You've got to use faith. Abraham used it and it was was accounted unto him for righteousness. And so God is going to reward you for your bold move. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't use the force. The force. Be like that John the Baptist. Speak up. Release the kingdom and receive the blessings. The Lord bless you today. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance and the Lord give you shalom. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Join me here every Sunday at 8.30 for this powerful broadcast. We are excited to bring uh, lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of Glory is going to find entry. He is going to come in. You cannot resist Him any longer. The Lord bless you indeed. In Jesus' name. Lift up your head.